welcome to Wong Got in Hong Kong. So today, as you go to the title, I'm going to be talking all about street food. Wong Got is one of the busiest areas in Hong Kong, and here you'll find everything from like electrical goods to markets. You find Temple Street Market nearby, Ladies Market, Sneaker Street Market. There's a ton of things. If you love shopping, then this is the district to be, and there's also a ton of food spots as well. Which leads me to street food. Now, when I think of street food in Hong Kong, Wong Got Shoe Show at the first place I think of. Even though you can find a dotted all around, Wong Got is kind of like the place where you could collectively find a bunch of different stalls, like the one right behind me. So today, I'm gonna try some classic things and then show what it's like on camera, the experience, and what to expect okay, if you are coming here for street food. <laughs> now, I haven't actually been to Wong Got for street food in quite a few years. I think I came here like three, four years ago, so I'm interested to see what it's like now, and I'm really hungry. So at about 10 past nine, so it's actually pretty early, and all the shops are just opening up now, so I thought I'd get in there and go before the busy peak season begins. After you collect your food, you have four different sources to choose from. It's got some mustard, chili sauce, team germ, which is, I think it's like hoisin sauce, and fan care germ, which is ketchup. This is my food, and it came to $80, which roughly kind of converts to eight pounds. I've ordered some curry fish balls, which is a classic street food here in Hong Kong, and probably the most famous one, aside from egg waffles, in my opinion, and my two favorite street snacks. I've also tried the octopus, which comes in a skewer, and the cheese sausages because I was quite intrigued cheese and a sausage uh, I've never seen that one before so I'm intrigued to try it but on the menu you can get everything from spiced beef offal fried pig intestines beef stomach boiled snail meat shrimp pills which is basically just like shrimp balls on a skewer to veggie options as well so there's a bunch of things to try and each stall um, are quite similar but there's also some standout uh, different dishes so it's worth looking around and seeing what you fancy just pick a skewer from the pot, add in your sauces and then away you go. I'm going to start off with the curry fish balls. They come in a loose package and the smallest portion is $40. So it's best if you come with someone else, unless you really love curry fish balls like I do. And then I just drop some on my shirt. It's a very mild curry taste. So even if you don't like spice, I think it's worth giving a go. You have a slight kick at the end of the curry spice coming in. The texture is just so interesting because it's a bit springy. You have the curry sauce absorbed into the fish balls and it's just like such a delight to eat it's very Moorish. In fact, I'm gonna get another one. It's definitely a classic Hong Kong street food dish. The great thing about street food here, like it's so good on the go. So if you are just passing by, you just wanted something really quick, cheap, and you just want to be on your way, walk whilst eating, or just grab and go, then street food stores are the best places because you get have a little taste of local flavours without breaking the bank and you can try a lot of different things as well. So be sure you get the skewers. I'm trying to now eat this whilst holding this camera. But now I've got the cheese sausage that I've never had before. I'm ordering all of this by myself. I've ordered like three persons worth of street food. Mm. Think of like a mini frankfurter with like runny gooey cheese. That's actually very good. It looks like this. So it's like a little bit of cheese kind of seeped into the sausage meat. Mm. Time to try the octopus on a stick. It looks like this. So you see all the tentacles. One, two, three, four, five chunks on the skewer here. So, cheers. <laughs> Has a gelatinous kind of texture, not really any spice. This also has the low show me. Oh, if you love octopus, I feel like you're going to love this because it's also been slowly braised um, and it's just delicious. If you're not used to the textures of squid and octopus, you may not like this because it might be quite full on. But if you love it, then I feel like you're going to really like this. Mm. The lady here was also super nice and one tactic that I noticed she does with every customer including me When you first place your first order in my case of curry fish ball she'll go like and So I'll be like uh the octopus and then she'll be like and And I'm like eh the sausages so she makes you order at least like a minimum of three things Even though it's just one person but I did it and I feel like everyone else around me did it as well so it's a very good tactic Tune 
嗰個五香牛雜同埋一個龍蝦丸啊！唔該曬。I just ordered this, and this is beef offal seasoned with five spice, and it's ten dollars. We've got some beef stomach here. We've got some tripe, intestines. One of the great things about Cantonese cuisine is that we don't like to waste any part of the animal, so every part of it has its use. Next up, these are the lobster balls. I'm not sure there's actually lobster in it, but they've called it lobster balls anyway. It might be just prawns, uh, but it's been deep fried. Look at it glistening in the spotlight of the street food stand. I'm on the corner of Wangkok Road, so. I I hope you can hear me. I think this is the tummy. It's so tender. Mm. And if you're not used to eating offal, these are very, very different textures to what you would normally find. Um, but it's like very, very fatty. It almost melts in your mouth because of the uh, amount of fat content, especially of this intestine. But I personally love the texture. I find it very, very easy to eat. I kind of grew up being taught to try bits of everything and to never waste food. So to me, I've been used to this kind of texture. But I think for ten dollars, it's good to just give it a go and see what you like, what you don't like. Try some tripe, try some intestine, and. If you can get past the idea of you eating apples, because I know some people find it quite hard to literally stomach, um, it might, you might be surprised, you might actually like it. Five Spice is like a very, very uh, important seasoning agent with uh, Chinese food. This isn't spicy at all, it's just very, very fragrant, it's very, very aromatic, and it's just delicious. Mm. I also have the lobster balls. Turns out I actually have four, but I dropped it in the bag and the nice lady uh, told me to pick it up. So. <laughs> This is the lobster ball. There it is. I actually love this texture. So if you've ever had squid cake or fish cakes, it's a very, very similar texture to that, but the outside, you can see it glistening from it being deep fried in the oil, but it's not crispy. It's got a little light crispiness to it, to the skin, but it's not like crispy, um, but it's just got a fantastic texture. You can see little flecks of the lobster in there. I'm not, I'm not sure it's actually lobster, but it looks kind of like it, but it's, it was $10 before, so I'm a little bit skeptical, but it's very, very tasty. And, and again, you can add your optional sauces. You can have some chili sauce, uh, some team jam, which is like the hoisin kind of sauce. You can add soy sauce. It's all good. It's pretty oily, but it's so tasty. I'm meant to actually grab lunch after this. Hopefully I'll still find room. I'm sure I'll find room. It's Hong Kong. Oh my gosh, so good. I think this has been braised, which explains the texture. It's very, very easy to pull apart. The meat is so, so tender. It's probably not the most healthier things, but if you want to try bits of everything and the local flavors of Hong Kong, I'm not going to break the bank. It's a very, very cheap eat. And it's, it's fun, it's good atmosphere, especially the evening. It's so fun to come here for drinks, come here for street food, and then just observe and admire the lights of Wong Go and nightlife. I'm gonna head over to Tiger Sugar to get some brown sugar bubble tea. I've seen a ton of rave reviews about this place and hopefully the queue's not too bad. But word of warning, if you don't like oily food, then you may not get on with this, especially with curry fish balls because it is quite greasy. I mean, it is like cooked in oil and the broth, so yeah, bear that in mind if you don't like it. Tiger Sugar's not open until 11 o'clock, so I'm now have to go to Sasa. <laughs> and see what uh, beauty products I can buy inside. I love the sound of the crossing. I don't know, I just love the sound. So funny, they're literally slowly opening the shop. It's two minutes to 11 and it's already a queue and I'm third in the line. There is a literally a bunch of different drinks to choose from. For the brown sugar boba pal with their famous cream mousse topping. And it's actually $30, which in the UK, this would be probably like nearly double the amount or at least like £4.50, £5.50. Just in the taxi now with my brown sugar pearl tea. There was already a huge queue and it's only like within five minutes of opening. This brown sugar bubble tea actually comes from Taiwan. It's come over to Hong Kong. It's meant to be one of the best in Hong Kong. Well, technically like in Taiwan, everywhere that they have it. Um, and like these are from very, very like bubble tea experts and I've done a lot of research into which bubble tea to try. So 
this one came up on top. The boba have been cooked with brown sugar so it all absorbs all of the sweetness. Make sure that everything is dissolved so you have to shake it up and down about 15 times and that's a very important step because otherwise the flavours won't merge together as well. This is what it looks like when it's all shaken up together. It's so good. It's like definitely one of the best bubble teas I've ever had. And it's so affordable considering how much it would be in England. But the boba itself is a lot softer than what you would normally see. And it's just absorbed that brown sugar so it's naturally sweet when you chew it. It's in love with teas because it is a snack and a drink at the same time. And this one, it's like a full-on dessert. But also very refreshing as well. And what's special about this one is that it has a cream mousse topping on top which just adds to the creaminess so just imagine oh, brown sugar bubble tea with extra cream ice cold when it's hot in hong kong it's absolutely delicious i'm going to end my video here because i'm now on my way to get some dim sum which will be a separate video but i hope you enjoyed this street food video in one got and if you did i would love it if you give it a thumbs up um, just because it helps this video out and spreads it out to other like-minded people who also like street food and if you haven't already please subscribe for more food lifestyle and travel videos and i'll see you in my next video in hong kong bye